Hello and welcome to Serena.Ryan. I am Serena.Ryan and it's 2023. This is Better Budgets, our live stream. And today I have a special guest with me. Chantelle Hills is a live stream expert and she helps me with this channel to make it as amazing as it is with our monthly live streams here, talking about better budgets for small businesses. And she was also often found behind the scenes in many channels on YouTube. Her expertise is one that is incredible because she makes it look easy. And I believe that is one of the true arts of experts in their particular area. I love how she's able to bring communities together and also the tech side of things as well. I also love there is a side of her that is one where she is also a parent like I am and she has basically moved into this space because it gives her flexibility and that is awesome because Often we don't see enough of those people who are taking what is available to them to create the life they want. Today we're going to talk about how she makes the most of her budget of time and money to create the life she wants and share some incredibly valuable tips. Chantelle, I can't wait to have you on screen with me today as we go through what it looks like for 2023 for yourself and how we can make the most of that together as well and inspire others to do the same because that is what this is about. The reason we do live streams, Q&As like this is because we need to see more people doing things differently and I believe that will actually help me today as I learn even more from Chantel and also you as you're listening and tuning in. Don't hesitate to subscribe to the channel if you'd like to join the conversation in the live stream today. We very intentionally set it this way so we keep the chat quality and also enable you to make the most of what you're doing here today. Your time's valuable and I want to make the most of it and get in. And Chantel, welcome. <laughs> it's great Hello. to have you today. Thank you for having me. I, uh, I was very much surprised when it was time for me to come on and um, talking about like the balance of the finances and the family, that's, that's not actually my comfort zone. So this will be an interesting conversation. Look, and I think we had a lovely chat before today's live stream about what it is we have to share or not share. And the beauty yeah. of it is there's no boundary that I set. It's one that you set and also this is actually about being comfortable yeah, and not going too far into uncomfortable territory. The mm. reason I bring that up is we easily can be lulled into this false sense of security online that we yeah. have to share everything and we don't. We really don't. It is, it's, and I think it's actually important not to because and, and I talk about this in a few different places. Framing is everything. You need to be talking about what your community or your audience are there for. So if you are sharing some personal tidbits of your life and over on one of my channels, I probably share a little more than what I do on my live streaming channel of my personal life. But you need to make it a conscious decision and not just for... Um, you know, keeping part of yourself for yourself, but also for your own personal safety. Uh, we're in an online place where there's a lot of um, bad elements uh, and it's, it's horrible to think about that, but there really are. And it is it's imperative that you do think of your safety when you're deciding what to and what to not share and not just your physical safety, but your mental safety as well. Um, yeah, it's, it's definitely a balancing act deciding what's going to be shared and what's going to be not going to be shared every now and again it's a little bit of a like a, oh tmi came out um <laughs> and and you sort of have to decide oh am i gonna backtrack on that am i gonna like clarify it or am i just gonna dump it and run um you, you just it's it's going to be a personal decision for every single person um to decide exactly how much they want to share but um it's really important that you also have these conversations 
with your if you have a partner if you have children it's really important to have these conversations and decide how much they want to be shared about as well um my husband not the, not the biggest fan of it so i gen like as i've actually had people who were surprised i was married um <laughs> for whatever reason but you know um uh, and I have a teenage daughter now and she is much more willing to be um, talked. She doesn't mind being talked about now. Earlier on when she was much younger, she was quite happy to be on my craft channel. So there's some older videos of her actually on camera doing things. She taught tutorials for kids on how to knit Christmas garlands and things like this. So, um, But when she was much younger, she was happy to do that. But she went through this age phase where she was like – mom um so I just you know pull back and I might mention her or talk about where she's up to but um that would be it because that's that's as much as she was interested in having shared about her so I think if you've got family you need to have the discussion you need to talk to them about yeah. what they are and are not um willing to accept of your conversation about them online I appreciate that. And I think it's a regular check-in with that. Um, it, as, it you know, has like, to be not, not mm. just a, a you, you said it was okay seven years ago. You mm -hmm. do need to make it a regular conversation. Um, I've just had a call come through, like online. That's weird. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, interesting one because I find, as you know, I'm also a parent and yeah. I started – doing the online space as my own business yeah for, geez when my kids were I had a five-month-old and an almost one and a half year old yeah. and at the time they really didn't have a say I just wanted to yeah. you know keep them offline the interesting part of that and I think this also ties into today's topic as well is that the reason I was starting doing what I wanted to do was for flexibility. Yeah. So it was actually for them. So knowing that that was a part of my why, and that I think you know as well, it gets talked about a lot, yeah. <laughs> how we want to have a why and share that really widely. And how does that look when we're putting our why out there into the world and yeah. still protect the privacy because and, that's the thing, you're not just protecting your own privacy at that stage, you are protecting your family as well. Yep. Yeah, and I think, um, look, I've just come back from two and a half weeks now of blackout pretty much. Yeah, where a lot of I us was, have. Yeah, that, that was it. It was like, that's it. I'm on full break away from everything. And it actually took me a few years to get to that. Do you have a full break like that when you decide, okay, it's year end and you're not going to be online for a bit? Um, I do ish, if that makes sense. So I monitor my emails just in case something comes through that's either urgent or catastrophic or whatever, um, just to make sure that if I can start solving a problem so I don't come back to an absolute dumpster fire, I can. Um, it also depends on different agreements with different clients as to whether or not I will continue on for their their particular thing. Um, but, yeah, I, I definitely try to have a time where I just kick back on the couch and have guilt-free Netflix and crochet. <laughs> um, I, I Look, I think no matter what you do, I think that having some sort of break away from your computer, from your devices, which is bizarre for me to say because I'm a total tech junkie, um, <laughs> is, is it's important for your brain. And it's important to actually every now and again, especially with, you know, you know how much we all work, it's important to look up and step out of the house and and go and do something that you haven't done for a little while or or just sort of break away from your regular routine. So if you can't have a total shutdown break, I think that you need to at least try to do something that's outside of your normal routine, if at all possible. And I know it's easier said than done. Um, 
but I really do try like that. I've got, cause I've got, you know, a few different pies going. There's a couple that I can actually just totally shut down and like put a note on their website. Like, Hey, nothing's happening here until this date. So all I do there is just keep an eye on emails. Um, and then there's other ones where I'll be like, I'll, I'll actually jump into live streams and, and I'm on holiday. So I'm, I've got no job, but I'll just sit there quietly and enjoy the live stream because the reason mm. I started this whole live stream journeys because of how much I love the whole aspect of live stream not just the technical um, production of live streams but also just the enjoyment of interacting with people and their communities and just seeing like even though I don't even have my keyboard handy and I'm just there to watch just seeing how people interact with their communities and how you watch the co different communities interact with each other and they build and they grow. And then also every now and again, I, was, I jumped into a random live stream the other night. And I'm not kidding. The streamer was a, it was a small channel. So they didn't have very many people in their chat. And they ignored new people. Mm. And I'm sort of sitting there thinking, hmm, you're definitely here for a select few you're not here for the broader group. Uh, it was a very small uh, um, audience. It was only sort of 20-odd people. And there was two get two co-hosts. So plenty enough opportunity. I see creators who are quite able to interact with a much larger audience. Um, and you might miss the occasional comment, but they missed everyone's comment except for the people whose name that they knew. Wow. So. It was, I was sort of just like, okay, this is definitely a what not to do instructional for building your community. Um, but yeah, that was, that was my Saturday night. <laughs> well, it's actually interesting though, because it's, as you said, I went into, when I say blackout, I deleted off virtually every social media app from my phone with the exception of Instagram. And well, I say that, oh my goodness. I just realized as I say it out loud, it's not just Instagram. I also kept YouTube there. So yeah, <laughs> but consistently, I don't look at YouTube as social media. And really, well, I guess I look at it differently. I, I look at it as I don't know if I, how I'd define it as I'm saying that as the words are falling out of my mouth. Um, it's well, definitely. Say, I actually yeah. think YouTube has its own hat. And I think that there are social media aspects, but then there's the whole non-social aspect as well. You get to decide which way you're going to go. I look at it holistically. I think this comes into getting more educated around YouTube. Mm -hmm. Because I see so much uh, SEO, like search engine optimization there, yeah. and I see community building, when I look at other social media platforms I see them social first but I I don't see YouTube as only social yeah it makes sense yeah, I understand yeah I know what you mean yeah. I think for me the the, 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 the some of the new features of like everyone having access to the community tab now um mm. and uh that they're rolling out a reply with short so you can actually do a video reply to someone's comment now um yeah. And so there's, and to me, that feels a bit more social, like direct yeah. contact. And many years ago, you used to be able to do a reply with a video on YouTube and they took that away and now they're bringing it back again. Um, and so, yeah, it's, I, I'm finding that it's, I think it's becoming more social media. Mm. I think they want to be considered social media um, and have mm. realized that to be considered social media, there needs to be a bit more of a, a social interaction whereas because I predominantly live in the live stream space that to mm. me feels very social um absolutely and I think yeah. that's one of the things that attracted me to explore live stream because I even look at live stream different here to other platforms my experience with live streaming started right when Facebook first introduced it and if I actually go back even further I was looking at Periscope mm -hmm. um and meerkat i don't know if you got involved with meerkat i uh, know i never i never saw meerkat i saw periscope meerkat. yeah well periscope was twitter's direct copy of meerkat oh okay meerkat yeah was and 
I accidentally stumbled into it, as you do. Um, South by Southwest is run oh, each yeah. year out of Texas, and I wanted to get involved with it. Yeah. And being based in Australia, I was sitting there pretty much in my pyjamas kind of getting involved in the live chats. And there was a live chat on Twitter and I didn't realise I'd literally stumbled into the first, um, they're ex- basically they were doing this live stream using Meerkat out of South by Southwest and I kind of just stumbled into it with about mm-hmm. a couple of dozen people. <laughs> and wow. I was like, oh. And What's happening? Like, oh, wow, we're live. And I'm like, this is really weird. And a couple of weeks later, um, Periscope was launched. And oh, wow. Okay. Kind of, and then uh, out of that came Facebook Live. Several, oh, I, I'm loose on my timings now because it's a bit of a blur around that period. But I would say a couple of months later, it got rolled out. And I remember seeing it for the very first time on Facebook and going, okay, and Facebook live streaming over there. And it was very clunky at first. I, I would very... I would say it's still quite clunky. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's different because the level of um, my experience with it is that it's constant that they're trying, each platform's trying to be the best they possibly can, but they're also testing out their own functionality as well as looking at the other functionality available on other platforms and then everyone's figuring out what is working best. Yeah. So the interesting thing with the live stream and why we're here doing it together now yeah. is that you're looking to see it's still only very, very new and it's still very much evolving. Yeah. Like, I mean, I've been live streaming for six odd years, but that's actually still very new in media. So Absolutely. when when you think of how long television's been around, how long radio's been around, so so live streaming is still quite new in media, and it's still there are still people out there who think that people who live stream are just d- having fun. They're not serious. They're not. Look, and you just nailed it for me there, right there. <laughs> There's this disconnect. I think should be explored more and Mm -hmm. it's also one of the the things I want to explore more particularly on this channel is the disconnection between work and fun why do we devalue they have to be mutually exclusive thank you I (laughs) debate that quite heavily but I would also say it's quite heavily conditioned to believe that there is work and there is fun and What you were just talking about, I love the fact that you said, okay, well, you're in work, essentially a break from work, but you still jumped into live streams. Yeah. (laughs) That blur of the lines was there and figuring that out, knowing that I had to take off some apps off my phone because if I go too heavily into work mode, I take away from being present in the moment. It's not that I don't have fun there. Yeah. And when you're trying to be present with people in person, if there's a distraction, that's different to knowing if you're having fun at work or not. And I think it's an interesting space to be because we have this blurred line between fun and work. How do you get that I don't know. Is there a possible way to make that clearer? <laughs> I, I for myself, I set different restrictions. So if I am in work mode, um, I will tend to come in here. I will sit at this computer. Um, it's, it's like, you know, the full double monitor setup. Everything's all ready to rock and roll, get the work done. Um, whereas when I am watching for fun, oops there is my dog's going (laughs) off at something sorry um whereas when I'm watching something for fun I will tend to be out in the lounge room on a laptop or streaming it through the television or on my phone where at the moment YouTube have a lot less functionality so even if I'm just popping in on a client's live stream so I've got access to different features than regular viewers um 
a lot of those features are limited on mobile devices. So I'm not tempted to try and do some of the things I would normally do because I can't because I'm on my phone. Um, <laughs> but I still get to like be like, oh, they're doing great. That's so good. And, you know, they're not losing momentum. That's so awesome. Um, and so, you know, I can still sort of just pop in, pop out. But I also try to actually not comment. If I'm popping into a like a, a client's chat or something like that and I'm not supposed to be there, I'm supposed to be on holidays, I'll not comment. Um and it's because because I, I work with people who I adore and it's, it's they're people I want to chat to. They're people I want to hang out with. They're people that I just um, that make me smile, that make me happy. So, you know, I, I, I do have to hold myself back a little, but I do draw these sort of little distinctions. So if I'm in work mode, I'm here. I've got my stream deck. I've got everything set up so that I can just, you know, go where is it when I'm in holiday mode um I realized I hadn't turned this computer on for six days so I was just like hey did I have six days off the entries no I did not but I did some emaily work things from my laptop but feed up on the couch Netflix on or prime video <clears throat> probably more likely prime video truth be told um <laughs> and just you know chilling back I'm making a blanket like crocheting a blanket started a new project so if I've got something like that around me I will be more likely to focus on that because I need something to focus on um and that's my that's my own personality um but I also like to bring it back to sort of family stuff it's school holidays at the moment and my daughter is much older now. So she is more likely to be, you know, like, would you like to borrow my car and disappear for the day? And she's just <laughs> like, thank you. You wink. Um, and I'm like, bye, shut the door, put the air conditioning on prime video, no arguments of what's being watched. Um, whereas when she was younger, I definitely had the rule of um, one day at home, one day out. So if I needed to continue on working or if I needed to, because I can't take the whole school holidays off. She has, um, her summer holidays eight, was eight weeks. So I mm. couldn't take that whole time off. I could give myself a week or maybe two weeks, um, but not eight weeks. So we had this rule of one day on, one day off kind of thing. So so I would get her occupied and I would quickly do some work, especially when she was younger. It was more like, what are you, you're very quiet. What are you up to? Um, you know, you <laughs> know the deal. Quiet. <laughs> the shenanigans happening. Um, and so, you know, it was, it was this sort of balancing act of finding things that she wanted to do um, and then, you know, so I'd work for, for a couple of hours first thing in the morning and then we'd get up and go out to like Dreamworld or, 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 you know, to the park or to Ikea or just something that's out of the house, take her out of the house to go and explore somewhere else. And then the next day I would work all day while still watching her and keeping an eye on her and things like that. Um, and then when it's not school holidays, having that flexibility still to be able to do drop offs and pickups and be that parent who can make it to the excursions and, and you know, all these other little things that I, I actually think of the, the enrichment of being a parent. Um, and I know it's a luxury. Not everybody can do that. Some people have to work the eight till six, add in the public transport. The kids are before school care and after school care and they're being dragged home at six o'clock at night and made dinner and checked their homework and, okay, it's bedtime and I might see you on the weekend. Um, yeah. And I understand that that is how it has to be for some people um, or at least that's how I think they need it. Thank you. I think that's the point. I think there's a level of understanding that you can be, I think the transition is understanding if you have the active choice to do it as um, a different way, mm -hmm. then you've got the capacity to do so. And through this YouTube channel, if you're in that space and you go, well, I would rather have more flexibility in my day rather than, say, doing the eight till six, which yeah. it has been in my past. That was something and I was doing as well. Life. Yeah. And I made an active choice to step out of that. And I had to figure out a way to transition. And transitioning for me is and has been consistent education for myself. It wasn't yeah. 
that I went, okay, well, this is the only way. I think the importance we need to see more of and why I have you as a guest here today as well is for people to see there's no longer only one way to do things. It's and really not. Because of technology, we can actually do it multiple different ways. And the more we get to see it being done in different ways, we can be inspired to transition to do it differently yeah. if we choose to. And I think where that starts is being able to set some goals so then you know what you want. So mm -hmm. if you, for example, well, wanted to do a hybrid work model, as in work for someone else and do your live stream, there's a possibility. Or you could do it full time. Or you could scale it. There's many different ways. I've got my hands up now. You probably see them on screen. Yeah. It's almost like I'm thinking of the kids now. It's, <laughs> it can be totally modular. I'll take a piece of this and a piece of that and I will mould it together and make it the life I want. But you need to yes. start with what is the life that you want. Well, you've got to understand what the life is that you want and then understand or get yourself educated on the different ways you can get there because there's, there's not the only other one way. path. Yeah. A pen. <laughs> but yes, draw those different paths out and figure that out. So tell me, what is something you're looking forward to for 2023? Oh, that's a big question. Um I like that. <laughs> <laughs> I very recently saw this video on um, setting goals for, for mm -hmm. the new year sort of thing. And I'm talking about how people have different resolutions and things like that. I've worked out many years ago. I am a total trash panda when it comes to setting and keeping new year's resolutions. It's gone by February. I've forgotten what I, what I would resolve to do. It's, it's not that I've decided I don't want it. It's just that I forgot what it was I wanted. Um, and I saw this amazing video and it talked about, seasons of change so rather than going okay for this year I'm going to lose 10 kilos by the end of the year or whatever it's going to be that definitive fail or win and then inevitably failed um it's actually more of like a I'm going to have a season of health so I'm going to have a summer of health and so not just focusing on weight, but focusing on health as a broader picture. Because one thing that this video really pointed out was you can be focusing on, say, weight loss or exercise and then actually find during that, excuse me, during that process, you have an injury that's actually a much bigger picture and mm -hmm. that you need to have that resolved. And therefore, this other health stuff kind of has to go down the ladder while you sort out this big health thing. And but technically, you've actually still succeeded your health goal because you still focused on it. You worked on something else. So my brain goes more in that sort of thing. Oh, so okay. I, I've, I've got a couple of seasons. I've got a season of health. Um, I have a season of fun. I have mm -hmm. a season of adventure. And I have a season of finances. So then my goals for this year is um, to be able to spend sort of three months, two to three months, focusing on each of these things so um the big scary one for me though was adventures um because I'm like no no I need to make it something serious like no I don't this is my life and these are things I want to focus on and something I really want to do more is travel um and it's been something I've wanted to do for ages and then you know for a while there we just couldn't so it was like oh well I didn't fail because I couldn't go and then <laughs> Like, ha, 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 I got a gimme. Um, sorry, my cable is touching my arm and it made me think it was a spider. So that was great. Um, it's not, right? <laughs> it's not. It was just the cable. Um, I really don't like spiders. All right. I'll just throw yeah. that out there. So personal overshare. Yeah, I really don't like spiders. Um, but, yeah, so something I really want to do is I really want to travel. So um, I the reality is I won't be able to travel for the first half of the year uh, because I've got to get some things into play, uh, finances being one of them. So I have my, my season of finance is in the first half of the year, whereas my season of adventure is in the second half of the year. I have um, my season of um, – oh, hang on, I've just got to – 
I did not mute my phone. That's I did not do my own live streaming checklist before this live stream. So <laughs> even the pros screw it up every now and again. Um, so yeah, I've got this. So but to try and have it so that I'm not don't have like finances and health in the fir- first half of the year, like all the big heavy serious stuff. I'm doing um, finances and fun. Well, like it's that. my first half of the year. And then health and adventures are for the second half of the year. Um, so that, you know, I've got something a little bit serious and something that I've got to focus on that's like either really confronting or um, a little scary because finances are quite scary for a lot of people. Um, especially like for me, it was a big case of I have to sit down and work out what my what my financial goal is. Like Mm. I needed a, a sort of a definitive point of where I was happy and I'm not talking millions or anything silly like that. Well, it's not silly, but you know what I mean? It's not, it's not, it's very, it's very hard for me to get from where I am to millions, um, in three months. Um, so it was more of a, um, okay. So what is my, like, I would be content with this. This would make Mm -hmm. things better in my life. Um, this point and so once I can get to that then the adventures there's more funds for adventures so um, I would love to go and you know hit vid summit in the second half of the year um, when's the date for that I knew you were gonna ask I, it's either end of September or early October it's it's okay. that sort of point in the year um, I can't remember the exact date it just happens to not be the same weekend as some work commitments that I have which I'm like oh Oh, tick. Um, you know, they <laughs> kind of worked it? out. Uh, it's in Dallas in Texas. Okay. So, yeah, it's um, it's not even like from Australia. It's not even like, okay, L.A. or San Francisco. But apparently there are direct flights to Dallas. There are direct so. the longest flights in the world. Yeah. Um, and direct, nonstop. I, I've, I've not flown for longer than three hours so the whole thing is the 17 hour flight's probably not on the table no I think I would like some sort of point where I can stop and just take a deep breath somewhere and be like (laughs) okay back on the plane um (laughs) I I can highly recommend having a stopover in Hawaii just put that on the vision okay just just a little stop I mean that's an adventure is it not well it is and it's about the halfway point it's a really yeah. good way to break it up. So your flight time is around the nine hour mark. Yeah. And then you can you can break that up. You can kind of hop from there. So you've yeah. got a choice of going from there to somewhere else. So if you just get into the States and then go from there over to Dallas. Yeah. Or just go straight to Dallas. Yeah. Just a thought, a few things to, to add. Yeah, I, I, and you know what? I'm all I've done so far is look at the prices of international flights from Australia at the moment, and my eyes went very big, like, um, because they're, they're quite, <laughs> they're quite ex, exorbitant. <laughs> is probably the best word right now. Um, they're a little bit, a bit higher than what they have been historically. Yes, um, I, I would say, interesting you say that because I, I've been looking at it myself and Mm -hmm. it's because you have some adventures coming yes yep i do i do indeed um i'll be at social media marketing well do you consider adventures or fun oh look i'm gonna say both Mm -hmm. but i can say i have fun in every day yeah okay so it's fun further afield yeah uh, how, how do you separate fun and adventure? Because I love talking about adventure all the time. Yeah. So for me, an adventure is where you're venturing out of your comfort zone. Um, okay. And so, and that's how I think about it. So that the long flight out of my comfort zone, another yeah. country out of my comfort zone, a group of more than five people out of my comfort zone. Uh, <laughs> So all of these things, but it's also, um, it's an adventure. So you've got to add on to that as oh, well. So that. it's not just like, cause you know, I list off like, you know, out of my comfort zone as a large group of people. I don't consider hitting Ikea as an adventure, but if I'm going with friends, that's fun. Even though it's 
large group of people, it's not quite yeah. that step for venturing. It's, kind of, it's a funny one for me because I started using the word adventure a lot more since yeah. I became a parent. Yeah. Because I particularly I've got two kids and the youngest is one of the biggest homebodies I've ever known. Mm -hmm. It's a real effort to get them out of the house. Yeah. So I've had to apply my marketing skills as a parent to make it sound Let's go amazing. On adventures. I'm going grocery shopping. It's an adventure. Yep. You never know who you're going to meet or what you're going to see while you're grocery shopping. That's right. Every little thing is. Yeah. Definitely. In the everyday, we have adventures. So then that's become part of my language in work yeah. as well adventure mm. <laughs> and with like social uh with mid, mid summit not social media marketing well but with mid summit um that will also have an element of fun because i'll get to meet a lot of people that i have interacted with or worked with for the last however many years that i've actually never met in person so mm -hmm. um i've met a few of them which has been really lovely but not all of them so that will be sort of the fun aspect but the adventure will be getting there and oh, well, doing the convention mm. so i i there, there was um they hosted a few uh vidcons down in melbourne and i considered those adventures um because they were in melbourne i'm in queensland so two states away and um so i had to go down and i had to you know get accommodation and then there's a large groups of people <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was, but it was, it was, I suppose, adventures for me include some form of travel, I suppose, yep. when I think about it. Um, it doesn't have to be 18 hours on a plane. It can be two and a half hours to Melbourne or, or a two hour drive. Um, yep. You know, so, you know, I've got, I, and I do try to make sure I incorporate some fun into my life. If you ask my husband and daughter, I don't do that enough. Um <laughs> Because they don't realise that this stuff is fun for me. They they always look at this as pure sort of work. Uh, the industry that my husband's in, if he's at his computer, it is spreadsheets and, you know, it's work. It's not – computers are not fun for him. Mm -hmm. um, whereas for me, it's like, yes, my computer is work for sure, but it's also where my games are and it's where my friends are hanging out. And you know what I mean? Like, so I look at my computer as a different tool than he does. So I'll have to like, like, cause I have a door and it's open usually unless they're being particularly noisy. Um, and that, and it's off camera. So that I see them poke their heads in and I'm like, you know, they're like, are you working? And I'll be like, <laughs> <laughs> oh no. And then my husband will just slide these cuppers under my nose, like cups of tea or cups of coffee or whatever. And yep. I'll be like, thank you very much. And as my daughter's gotten older, the cups have changed now to like fancy chai lattes and, you know, <laughs> things like that. And, and, I'll, and I'll be like, I'm tempted to say it's work just to get the chai latte, but no, no. <laughs> but oh, it's, it's, it's my own perception of what fun mm. is and everyone's perception of fun versus work versus adventures. It's all different. And you need to sit down and have a think and, and make the, the discernment for yourself and then make your plan, I think. And like you said, education, education on what is work, what is not work, what is fun, what is not fun. I personally have been on this journey of removing unfun things. Now, they don't have to be exciting level fun, but if it's something I dread and I can give it the flick, like, I mean, I have to pay bills, right? And I've got to clean the bathroom <laughs> and, you know, like vacuuming. Well, uh, dying, but, you know, well, yeah, yeah. In, it needs to be cleaned, but yeah. point, um, this is a fun thing with my kids. For them to get access to fun, a.k.a. device time in our house, yeah, they have to clean their bathroom, which is awesome. Oh, wow. It's That's a double nice. win for me. Yeah. Oh, man, <laughs> I love it. that. I love that so much. Um, but, yeah, like so, but when it comes to like do I accept this client or not, and it's like how do I feel when I've got to talk to them? Mm. How do I feel reading their emails and looking at their messages and did they make me feel good or bad or, and, and I look, you know what? That's a luxury as well. 
making that decision. Some people feel that they have to accept everybody, and I don't agree with that. I, I, I think, that. yeah, I, 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 I think you have to, to work with people you like. I agree. What I would say, this is this is one of the interesting things. When you're in a space of setting goals like you are now, mm. and I think we all are, even given it's January even 2023. Even subconsciously, even subconsciously, we're all setting goals for the year. Exactly. If you're in a situation where, like, again, we could be talking about the eight to six, nine to five job and you're like, okay, well, I'd like to do more of other things that would incorporate what I enjoy. I think it's important to look at it with a transition phase as opposed to a cut and dry phase, depending on your circumstances. Yeah. Because if you're, you know, wanting to transition, you, we do need to look at where we currently are and look at planning where we want to go instead of going, I'm here and I want there. There is always going to be a pathway, always. And there's a gap and you can't just jump it in one jump usually. Exactly. So, oh, okay. So I like asking you questions because out of that curiosity, when I know that that's your, where you're headed in your seasons, yeah. the little steps that can get make it, close that gap mm -hmm. is finding out there's more than one, there's not just one flight to get to Dallas no that's there's right there's so many <laughs> I actually realized you can book a flight that basically goes to every other country first and then hits Dallas <laughs> <laughs> I was just like because I was like okay yeah. I'm looking at the prices thinking okay directs are the most expensive obviously okay least direct and I was just like I really don't think I want to go via New Zealand, Japan, and Canada to get to <laughs> Dallas. <laughs> I was just like, okay, well, it exists. Interestingly enough, and this is what I've found as well, we're talking flights and travel and adventure. Go yep. to social media marketing world in mm -hmm. March. I was looking at my flight options. And at the time of booking, the cheapest flight for me was to go via Hawaii. Yeah. And oh, I darn. <laughs> well, that's right. And I was like, well, I've, I've flown via Hawaii. The last time was in 2019. Yeah. And that was the book. I was going to say it was, I've done it before on when I actually had my honeymoon, but I kind of forgot. <laughs> that goes back, well, just a more than a decade. Years. I scratched my head. It's like, how many years has it been again? Um. This is the thing, right? When we switch from being in work mode to family mode to business mode, it can often be different mindsets and memory recollections as well. Yeah. The beauty of stopping there means that it's less jet lag in my mm -hmm. experience because if it's like less than 10 hours in a flight, it's almost like a, a work day almost is yeah. where my brain works as opposed to if it's the 15 or 17-hour flight, it's overnight mm -hmm. and you're so long on the plane, you are, well, jet lagged. You're exhausted. Yeah. By it. You've got the opportunity to move around. So the bonus came out of it. It was also more economical to go via Hawaii. Yeah. I definitely have to look into that, I think. Hmm. Um, are you are you staying for more than a day, like one night or two nights, or on the way over? No, on okay. the way back, I have an overnight stay, so okay. I'll get the opportunity to luxuriate somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! Um, yeah, so so you're right in saying that it's not just a direct route, and that sometimes it's the path. That actually, and as you know, last year I was on a path and I had this path and I'm like, this is my path and I shall go this path. And then all of a sudden it was just like, Ooh. and <laughs> I ended up on a tangent of my chosen path and I'm actually happier on this new path. And I didn't realize the path existed and mm. And now it is, it's, it's, an, it's a work path. So it is a, but it's, it hasn't just changed my work life. It actually changed so many other things. And it was that whole conscious knowledge of being able to choose your clients, 
choose the work and make it fit the lifestyle I wanted and understanding the pieces before I tried to make them into my puzzle ball um, made it so that I could have the pieces I wanted. That's not to say my puzzle ball is finished. It is not. Um, I'm not exactly where I want to be yet, which I also think is awesome because not that I've ever gotten to my end goal on something um, like like life, um, the big thing, because I always feel like I'm constantly learning things and it's the constant new path and new path. I started live streaming because my yarn craft business, um, I was putting out tutorial videos and then I watch gamers because I like gaming. I'm like, I could totally do a two camera setup and show people my knitting and chat and do all this stuff. And it just kind of happened. You know, it, it was just like, I love tech. I love gaming. I could totally use what they're doing for what I want. And it was a learning. It was a, it was, I mean, it was a massive learning curve back in the day. It was ADSL. Every single live streamer said that if you didn't have my five megabits per second upload, don't bother trying to live stream. I had two um, and I worked it out. I, it wasn't the top quality stream, but I learned about bit rates and I learned about, you know, all trial and error. Sometimes the streams crashed and burned. Um, it happened. I learned that <laughs> Surface Pro can't do multicam live streams for years and be fine. Um, <laughs> you bring up a really in interesting point there. You have, you said that you love your crafting, you mm -hmm. love your gaming. Yeah. And then you saw an opportunity to take what you love that was separate, almost like these different blocks really, mm -hmm. and bring them together. Yeah. And that's created a new opportunity you didn't know was there. Yeah. It's a real interesting thing to think about. Like often we don't sit there enough and go, what do I love and how could I use that together? Yeah. It's like taking all the things you love. Mm hmm most simple and, thing right and, and sometimes it's even the things that you did years and years and mm -hmm. like a lifetime ago like I've had a few different careers over my life and way back at the beginning I did lighting for theater and so I you know was a follow spot operator and I set up all the beautiful lighting to to and I did lighting for productions as well as like you know conferences and all, all these sorts of things right and when I decided to stop doing that because those those work hours were not really conducive to family life, let's be honest. <laughs> um, and um, when I stopped doing those and started more of a nine to five, I went into corporate and jumped in at the bottom rung and worked my way up. I thought that's it. Lighting days, gone, done. Never going to use any of those skills that took me five or six years to learn um, ever again. And I like looking around, there's a light there, there's a light there, there's a light there, there's lights there, you know, like all of a sudden that other little puzzle piece, it just slotted in as well. It was the skills that we learned throughout our life, whether they're relevant or whether you think they're relevant to this career path that you're on, they actually do form part of who you are. And they will make it like you may not, I may not have been able to bring lighting into it, but I could certainly bring in planning. And when you're, when you're setting up a lighting rig, you have to sit down and make sure you're not going to blow the building up by plugging 14 things into the wrong part of a rack. <laughs> you know, you have to, you have to set up your lighting plans, you know, so that's a different part, but it's the planning and understanding the equipment. That's the same thing for any role. You need to plan and you need to understand the tools that you're working with and or bring in somebody who does understand the tools that you're working with. It's just kind of what we've done, Serena. Um, yeah. So, you know, it's you understanding how things work. It doesn't have to be lighting. It can be how to decorate a cake. 
You mm-hmm. have there's processes. You can't just put the top layer on first. You've got to go in. You've got to, you know, if it's multiple 17 layer cake, you need all the stabilizers. You need a crumb coat. You, you know what I mean? Like there's there's a <laughs> process. You know more about cake building than I do. It's, I was I'm, a cake decorator for a couple of years. <laughs> And, that explains it. <laughs> and and also I actually love watching people like there's this thing ha- that happens on TikTok, these storytelling things where they'll be decorating a cake but telling a totally random story. And I mm. don't even hear the story. I'm just like watching what they do. It's like a time lapse of a, this cake that just happens. And I love watching cakes being decorated. I think it's a total art form. Um, I did very basic very basic cakes uh, for a local bakery. <laughs> These guys make art pieces, like the whole sneaky water fountain that you can't see the spike because it's actually up through the fake water and, you know, like it. it's art. It's art. Anyway, totally digress. But there is well, there's plans one. and processes yeah. for every single task that we have. And whether you're planning a lighting grid, a live stream or a cake, there's still the planning and understanding the tools that you have and the steps that can't be missed to be able to break the rules and do what you want to do, like knitting, double webcam on no internet. I had to work out the rules and then break them. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, goodness. Look, it is interesting and I think that's a valuable point doesn't hurt to almost like if you're looking at setting your goals and you're not sure where you're going would you agree that you do almost a stock take of your skill set of maybe even look at your resume or you understand your skills that you've got and mix that with what you love I think if you can especially if you're using your resume when you're reading through it, see which jobs made you smile. Like when you're reading back through your history, see which ones sort of gave your heart a little flutter, like, oh, I miss doing that. Or um, the ones that made you smile, like you had that quirky work made at that place and he was a hoot. Um, you know, like what was it? Was it the work or was it the person, you know? And, and, and rule out that work and incorporate, understand you need more people like that in your life. You can do a total stock take by sort of thinking about what you've done and, and and I'm very much a how did it make you feel person. I always ask that question. I, I was chatting with a friend who's a photographer and, and he was showing all these beautiful photos and I'm like, what did it feel like taking that photo? And he went, I took a photo. And I'm like, yeah, but look what you captured. Like what were you thinking? What were you feeling about that light and that person mm-hmm. on that angle? Like, And he was just like, oh, um, you know, and it was yeah. – and, and so I'm very much a how does it make you feel kind of thing. Because if it, it makes you feel so trash, if it makes you feel sad or negative or trash or like a failure or any of those sort of more negative emotions, you don't want to be incorporating that into your future plan if you can, obviously, if you can avoid it. Um, yeah. Or incorporate as little of it as possible. And more of these things that bring you joy and bring you light. So if you want more time with your family, you need to think about, okay, I'm going to have to give up X amount of hours of work for this to happen. What will that mean in an overall picture? Can I actually take on a side hustle that I can do at a different time when the kids are asleep to actually bring that income back in? Or are we actually going to be happy and okay without it? Like, do I feel like I absolutely have to have this high level of income for whatever reason? Or Mm -hmm. can I drop it down a notch, not 10 notches, but drop it down a notch to incorporate more of these things that you want. It, it's a balance. I would say the book um, Your Money or Your Life is mm. a very good resource that I refer yes. to quite a bit Yeah, um, by Vicky Robin. It, because of exactly what you're saying, when we can... Be clear on what enough is because we do, we have those life things like being able to eat and pay bills and things Mortgage like Mortgage or rent or Ooh, power bills, you know. Life things that are kind of. Internet well, connection, kind of an important one for a live streamer. <laughs> keeping those things. Yeah. Understanding, and I would say 
from what you've said as well, making sure fun and adventure gets added in, layered on top of that. See, I, I understand the importance of that because for quite mm-hmm. a few years I didn't have those. Mm-hmm. I was in camp, got to keep working, got to keep working, got to work harder, got to work harder. And I would burn out every three or four months. I'd end up so sick because I've got a few health issues. I'd end up like just ridiculously sick for weeks on end. And, and it was a constant cycle because I would just get, okay, I've got to do this event and I need to do this much work to bring it to this event. And then I'd get home from that event and collapse for a month because I would have just worked like a crazy person for the last, you know, 12 weeks to get ready for an event. And, and then you lose a month. Yeah. It's, I, um, if I tie it back to where we started here today and Mm. just come back from a two and a half week break. Yeah. 2018, I didn't take my annual break because I felt like I was in a space of I needed to keep the, the momentum of things going. I didn't want to let go. Yeah. And I ended up in hospital having emergency. I was about to hospital. ask, how did your 2018 go without your, your break to start it, like starting it refreshed? It didn't start. It did. It had a, we ended up, Probably one of the scariest things in my life is realizing I had unexplained pain and mm-hmm. had to be taken to hospital. Yeah, I, we couldn't even wait for an ambulance. I had to get my had to go to drive me there, and that whole experience is what led me to saying enough. Yeah, it was off the back of my son saying to me. Three months prior to that, uh, mum, don't you like spending time with us? Because I wasn't doing what you said you were doing of alternating days of being like on or off Mm -hmm. and having time out and enjoying quality family time. I was on. Yeah. I was completely on, on, on. Yeah. And unfortunately our bodies aren't designed to permanently be on and I really appreciate, and this is the reason why I've got you here today as a special guest, is that I think it's important for me to know it's I'm not the only one, but also no. for you, this live stream, yeah, who feeling that you're exhausted or that you want to change and you're not sure if it's possible. Mm. And I think that's a, a thing we can. I don't know. I, I'm interested to hear what your thoughts are on this one as well. But we, can, uh, from my own personal experience, it's that we seem to think we're isolated and that working hard to be a workaholic can be a badge of honour. It could be something that there's no other alternative. It's yeah. either or both those things. Mm-hmm. And Unfortunately, it sets us up for not having enough fun. and yeah. Or even just downtime. Well, but I would I'd then challenge that time means it's not something that we can replace. And yeah. what I've been working with myself, and also it's part of the podcast I do weekly, um, adding up with Serena.Ryan. It's part of this YouTube channel. Yeah. As well. And increasingly it's a part of every other aspect of my life is understanding that money is something that it's a replaceable thing that doesn't actually have any emotion. It's a transactional thing that we can exchange for things. And many of us sit in a space of trading time for money. Mm -hmm. The biggest thing for me is that and I think it's actually not just me, it's every single person out there, time's not replaceable. Yeah. Unfortunately, we're getting older. Um, a, a, a funny thing for me, a funny thing, it's just funny not funny. Uh-oh. Oh, yesterday I went, I was probably still half asleep, well, still in holiday mode, and I went to pick up this jar in, you know, I was in the bathroom and it's, you know, doing the lovely morning routine and I didn't realise the lid wasn't on properly 
and I dropped the jar and the cream in this jar went it basically coated everything in the bathroom oh my god just went <laughs> explosion of cream oh. everywhere well that wasn't in your daily plan of fun to clean that up <laughs> So was it. So was it. And then I'm kind of stone there. I'm going, I could cry or I could just suck it up and clean it up. And I end up laughing, like hysterical laughing. And my husband came to me and goes, what's going on? And I'm like, I've just dropped a really expensive jar of cream. And it was one of these, you know, whoo, lovely face creams that they're probably yeah, it was a treat really well to yep. women of my age <laughs> <laughs> and I've just gone well I could work really hard for more of that cream where I could just go and get one that doesn't cost as much um I had to just laugh because my reaction to it was like do I worry about the ridiculous amount of money I've spent on this stupid cream that's literally gone down the toilet <laughs> yep that's being wiped <laughs> up and binned <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going, and you're just counting the dollars as you're scooping it up and throwing it away. I'm like, why did I spend money on that? And I'm like, oh, well. That was the plan of nice skin. You didn't spend the money you know, psh, on the floor, you know. Um, before you were talking about, um, you know, us needing rest, and I, 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 it reminded me of a quote that I just read really recently, which I think is just super poignant for us and for other people a, a, around as well. If you're on this sort of journey of discovery and learning and where you are now versus where you want to be, can keep this in mind which is um it was it was uh I'm trying to remember exact wording of the quote but it was basically along the lines of have I worked hard enough for this break or am I well rested enough to take on this work and it sounds like you were quite well rested and <laughs> <laughs> that's the thing right you've got to just go with the importance of the rest, I'm a yes. big advocate for it now because I see I can't replace my health. I can still remember that time in hospital yeah. and I was questioning because I was quite sick if I'd ever get the taste back to be able to enjoy food again. Yeah. And it, I lost my appetite wholly and solely and I started to appreciate being able to enjoy the most basic of things that we often take for granted yeah and it put me on a path at that time to go every single day I've got a choice on how I can spend my time mm -hmm. and I can be upset I can be angry I can be bitter yeah but is that helping me or making it more difficult for me and does and it waste your precious back. energy yes yeah, so, yeah, I'm going to laugh. It was actually pretty funny. Like it was quite, it was a piece of art. You should have seen this cream just in there. I'm sure I'll go in the bathroom. I'll find more because it's the same colour as the tiles. So it's really. <laughs> <laughs> Are you kidding me? Oh, um, my goodness. <laughs> but I'm sure he was like, okay. Hey, I'm just gonna. It's like I'm just gonna away. back away slowly. <laughs> just yeah. leave her to her mental breakdown. <laughs> and I was like, ah, oh, well. And I'm now at a point where you're talking about. There's no right or wrong way. I think if we can talk about the pathways today that you've shared, and mm -hmm. I've shared some of mine as well. Like each day. At the moment, I'm well and truly in school holidays. I've got a nine and ten year old. Yeah, and yeah. Um, we're doing the practice of every day we're getting out of the house for something. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we're I, I'm making a point of working um, early ish before, like so, a couple of hours while they're still asleep, and then one or two after they're awake. And then we'll do something. And then there's this mix of getting chores done to, to get device time because, look, I see 
their view of success every day is their opportunity to play a game and connect with their friends because their social network at their age is connecting online. But I'm also conscious of limiting that time so it doesn't become the priority every day. Yeah. Um, We talk about being good humans here, so there has to be an element of being good and looking at it as a reward, not an entitlement to get it. And it's interesting. Um, My big challenges so far these holidays have been I've dusted off my bike no, I don't have an e-bike, which seems to be a big trend at the moment. It which really does. Think, it's good. I, yeah. I understand the value in that. Um, but I have got a perfectly good bike. I haven't actually used it enough. I've mm-hmm. had to dust it off. And the kids have learned how to ride bikes, so I'm bike riding. Nice. Um, interesting. Nice. And we're swimming. And, yeah, some interesting adventures. And this is the thing, the adventure doesn't have to be something that you spend a great deal of money on. No. The adventure can just be something, an activity that's not in your usual environment. Yeah. Which for me is at at, at this desk, in this room. This is my usual (laughs) environment. So it could be the lounge room. (laughs) Well, you know, and that's the point, when you actually mentioned that as well, I do yep. sit on the couch with my laptop sometimes as well, and I see that it's a different atmosphere. Yeah, I, I'm in a different mindset when I'm there as you well. You really so are. Yeah, yeah, and and I definitely see the um, the allure of people who want to go to co-working spaces or or go to a coffee shop to work or or and things like that because it is a different environment and it might spark a different idea or a different for me the thought of working in a coffee shop other than the fact that I might get really good coffee um (laughs) I I'm like then I've got to take my own internet connection because I'm certainly not hot spotting off a public Wi-Fi, you know, like, so I have all these other things and I'm like, eh, maybe I'll just have it as a break. <laughs> um, but I also understand why people feel that. Um, but I always find that when I'm in this space, I get into work mode mm. and I'm more efficient with my thinking, more efficient with my time. Um, whereas when I'm out on the couch, I'm like, oh, shiny thing. Oh, that's cute. Oh, oh. <laughs> do some, <laughs> you know, um, it's it is a different level of experience, and every person is different as to whether the the lounge room might be the place that they're the most efficient with their work in. So everyone, you just need to each person needs to make these decisions for themselves. What works for me may totally crash and burn for somebody else. Um, you know, and, and what works for somebody else, I just might just feel totally overwhelmed by that level of pressure or 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 just not be able to cope at all and just end up sick because that's my body's automatic response. Oh, look, stress, pressure, pressure, stress. Oh, you have a cold. Um, <laughs> it's interesting, yeah. It, what I would say is that everything you've brought up today and you even started talking about what to add um, is that I love the concept of ad and awareness is something that I, the aim of these live streams creates. So if we can have more awareness yeah. and then through that awareness make some decisions. So I love that you've actually talked about your seasons today and dedication means the opportunity to not just think of it as one thing that's where I think a downfall can be is if we're setting a new year's resolution there's not enough dedication yeah sorry I missed what you said there oh no when you make a a new year's resolution on on a very definitive thing it's a single point and there's no gray area there's no chance of growth beyond that because that's the goal whereas when you have it as a season or whether you have it as a more broader topic some people like oh it's wishy-washy and you can't make a decision no it's not it's because I I have the understanding and the reality that my brain could actually take me further than that if I let it a season I also love the fact that it runs for 90 days 
Yes. If you thought of it like that, it's yes, it's I, actually a quarter. Yeah, it, and because a lot of my business planning is quarter by quarter, so yeah. bringing in the mindset to be able to do the same thing for myself. That's that's a positive for me. Absolutely, and I wouldn't say it's it's definitely not talking about it being wishy washy. I would say the other way to look at it is focus points enable you to map better as opposed yeah. to going to a single point because yeah. you can also have check-ins along the way and it gives that opportunity for it to last longer as opposed yeah. to it being a single thing because single and only once is not enough for yeah. it to be an And it's basically point. hit or miss. Mm. There's no actually you did better or or this other thing happened, but you're still on a good trajectory. It's just a different trajectory. When you have a single point, I will do this one thing, it's very, you have a 50-50 chance of failure. And while I try not to think of failure as a bad thing, it's a growth point. Um, when, when I'm planning out my year and my goals, I don't want to be planning in for the possibility of a 50-50 chance of failure. Um, because I'm really unlucky. Because <laughs> <laughs> 50-50 means I've lost, man. <laughs> well, I've been talking to my kids and something came up with regards to gambling. Yeah. And so we've been talking through what it is. Oh, okay. Yeah. You only, my my take on it is you can only bet what you can afford to lose. To lose, yes, Therefore, absolutely. It's minimal to none in my area because they'll just go, well, if I can't afford to lose it. I'm not putting it out there. <laughs> but I Absolutely. want them to actually be able to ideally use it as a filter. Go, oh, actually, yeah. if I can't um, yeah. afford to lose it, I'm not going to put it out there. That's I love that, that you're giving them that mindset for it because it's quite often the thought of I could win this much, but you actually you could lose this much and you're yeah. more likely to lose it. And that's the thing. I don't want to have them in a mindset. I, I've, I've been a parent long enough to notice <laughs> that if I tell them they can't do something, they want to do it more. Yes. Hello, kids. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, yes. I'm looking for ways. But isn't that the same for you as well? If you're told you can't have that thing, your brain starts focusing on it. Like, actually, that thing would be really cool. I'd really <laughs> like to have that thing. How do I get that thing without, you know, getting that thing? <laughs> that's the thing, right? So I think how it's do human you... nature. I don't even think it's just kids. And that's the thing. I'm noticing as a parent some of my own habits and curiosities and nature get mirrored back at me. Yes. And that, that and it's mirror. not always good. <laughs> no. So then how do I work through that? And yeah, I realise also they watch me and everything I do. So I've got to not just say things. I've got to show what I'm saying and live it. And it's yeah. been this real interesting mix uh, that yeah. – they become my teacher sometimes. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, look, I really appreciate your time today because I feel it's an interesting time of year to. It is a very interesting time of year for people. It is, and I think, a really important time to find or create the space to talk through, to work through what we've been going through today, what will happen, and I've found this repeatedly, is that if you don't allocate some time in the quieter period of your business to focus on what you want, mm -hmm. life will happen to you. Yeah, It'll get busy and before yeah. you know it, it'll be 12 months gone and you'll go, I'm no further in front or I haven't achieved and you'll go, why hasn't that happened? Because you haven't taken the time to identify what you want. Yes. And therefore, if you haven't identified it, and the way I like to look at it is it's like you haven't confirmed what the next, uh, you know, marker is going to be, where your destination is going to be, or at least 
what markers along the journey of success are going to be. So if you don't have those yearly goals or 90-day goals, any kind of goal, yeah. what are you aiming for? And without it, it's like you haven't plugged the address into the GPS when you're driving. Where are you going? The car's only going to go. An adventure. <laughs> <laughs> and look, it could be an adventure that you love. But or it could not really not be. What are you doing? <laughs> yeah. 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 So I, you know, I love that I also have a group that people can join where I help them understand how to have accountability and support yeah. along the way with these goals. So if you want more information on that, don't hesitate to comment below this video, reach out and find more information over on my website. Uh, this is something I'm pretty passionate about because until I figured this out for myself, I, yeah. I really didn't know what was possible. And now it's exciting to know that I've created a life where I can actually have that time out with my kids. Yes. <laughs> and go on adventures, a lot of them here and across the globe. And I want to be able to enable that for more people as well. So thank you for those who have joined and listened in and listened to the replay of this as well. It will be on the Serena.Ryan YouTube channel. And Chantelle and I are here because Chantelle's behind the scenes. Um, I'm always here. <laughs> on camera. She's always here. Lurking <laughs> quietly in the background. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and don't hesitate to go and check out chantelhills.com as well where you'll get to learn more about live streaming and what she does. Today we've definitely talked about goal setting and how that comes together, but I want you to see that uh, what she does is it helps you get confident doing live streams and take away a lot of the, the tech and logistics that you don't have to do so you can focus at being your best on screen, which I love. And that's why she's a part of this channel, but she's a part of many others as well that you may not even realize. So if it's something that you're interested in learning and getting support with, do go and get in contact with Chantelle over on her website or her YouTube channels as well, which I'll make a point. They're actually in the description They're and the description. she'll also pop yeah. them up yeah. um, in the comments as well. So thank you for your time today, Chantelle. Thank this you for a lot having of fun, me. It's been, <laughs> it's been so nice to, like, I love talking about live streaming, but it's lovely to talk about the other side as well. So it's been a really great conversation. Thank you. Absolutely.